Go. Okay, hello. My name is Mrs. Pizzorno, and this is a rat dissection tutorial for a biology class in high school. And today we have a male rat. And right here we have three instruments. We have our first is our probe, second is our scissors, and our third is our, uh, I'm sorry, our scalpel. And we're going to talk about first his external parts. Um, if you look here, this is the ear flap, which we call the pinna, and we have a pinna also. You put an earring in it, and sometimes you put your plugs in it, but this is the pinna of the rat. Right here is the eye. Right over here are the whiskers, and we give it a fancy name called the vibris vibrissae. I have to redo this, some of this. Um, here is the external nares, which is the nose, the openings to the nose. Here is the cleft and the lip, and that's called a philtrum. And because these rats were grown in a lab and they were killed by gas, um, their tongues are usually hanging out of their mouth. And so this is the tongue of the rat coming out of its mouth. Um, you can notice it has hair on the outside because it's a mammal. And so this is the hair and it is yellow in color, usually because of the bioperm and the formaldehyde that it was preserved in. This is a male, and you can tell it's a male because hanging right here is the scrotum, and inside the scrotum are the testes. This little projection here is what we call the penis. Most of the penis is internal, and the opening right here is called the urogenital opening because this is male, and urine comes out of the opening and also semen, and so we call it a urogenital opening, meaning it's part of the reproductive system and it's part of the excretory system. This is the tail, and underneath the scrotum by the tail is the anal opening. So, yeah. Okay, this is the female, and as you can tell, she does not have a scrotum. So it looks very different. She still has a little projection right here. And we call this the clitoris. And in the clitoris is an opening called the urethral opening. And out of the urethral opening comes urine. Behind that is the vaginal opening where babies come out of. And there by the tail is again the anal opening which is where the feces come out of. And so this is female and that's male. Females also have little nipples um, because they have mammary glands, they are mammals, and you can find the nipples up along her chest. Okay, I'm going to show you now how to cut open your rat. So I'm going to take the scalpel and I'm going to go from the mouth to the ear, and I'm going to make an incision that cuts through the masseter, and I'm going to do that on both sides of the rat. And then I'm going to take some scissors and I'm going to cut along that and this will cut open the mandible. And I'm going to do that on both sides. And then I'm going to take my fingers in the front and I'm going to try to pull it down and I'm going to cut on both sides. And I want to follow the palate so I don't... Right? Okay. I want to follow the palate so I don't cut into the brain cavity or I don't cut too deep and miss the openings in the mouth. And so I'm going to slowly cut on both sides and I'm going to slowly peel back until I can see the glottis. And that's an indication to me that I have gone far enough. So that is how you open up the mouth. So here's the mouth, or what we call the pharynx. We had to cut open the masseter and the mandible with some scissors to open up the mouth as wide as possible. Up in the front are the incisor teeth. Those are for cutting. There's the split in the lip called the philtrum. Down here are the molars. And in between the incisors and the molars is what we call a diastema. It's where it is missing canines and premolars because this animal is not a carnivore. It can eat meat light or insect like organisms, but it does not tear things like a lion. So it's missing those canines and those premolars. These ridges here are the hard palate, and then down below is the soft palate. Right here, next to the molars, 
are the openings that go to the ears. We call those the eustachian tube openings. And then as we look down the throat, you can find the posterior nares, which lead to the nose. So when the rat breathes in through its nose, it comes down below the palate and out this opening called the posterior nares. Then in front is the glottis, and that opening leads to the lungs. And so when you eat, or when the rat eats, you don't want food to go down the glottis, so in front is this little flap called the epiglottis. And so food will push against that and cover the glottis as it goes down the esophagus, or the esophageal opening. So it goes posterior nares, esophageal opening, glottis. And then here is the tongue. Again. So here I'm going to cut through the abdominal wall. I don't want to go too deep because I will cut an organ. Then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut up towards the diaphragm. And I'm going to cut all the way down till I get to that urogenital opening. Then I'm going to cut around the legs, pulling the skin away from the organ so I don't accidentally cut them. And I'm going to do this on both sides. And that way I can see my abdominal organs that we've already talked about, or we're going to talk about. Here is the intestine, and you can see that they don't fall out, and that's because they're being attached by the mesentery, which is this clear membrane that holds the intestines together and it has blood vessels in it that go to the intestine to absorb the nutrients that are digested and take those nutrients like glucose and lipids and carbohydrates to other places in the body. And this blood vessel right here is called the superior mesenteric artery. And so it branches into these blood vessels that are in the mesentery. And you can break those with your probe and you can unloop the intestine to see all the parts. Okay, now I'm going to cut open the thoracic cavity, and you're going to also cut open the skin to the neck, and in the skin of the neck you can find the salivary glands, and so again we're going to cut to the side, and you can find the salivary glands. You're going to pull back the skin as you do that so you don't cut the organs, and right here we're going to find, we're going to cut downward, and we're going to find our heart and our lungs. And I just cut the diaphragm. And so you can see the heart and lungs. Um, also, this thin lining here that's on the thoracic cavity that makes it feel smooth and on the lungs is called the pleura. And that is a lining that reduces the friction as you breathe against your chest cavity. Show the other side the other side of the pleura. Yeah, so you have it here on the chest cavity and you have it on the lung. And this little membrane here is the pericardium. It's surrounding the heart. Okay, here in the neck area we just cut open the skin and peeled it back. You can find the salivary glands and there are three salivary glands. There are the submaxillary on top or attached to the submaxillary is the sublingual. And then on this side here is the parotid. These little round balls are called lymph nodes and they are part of your lymphatic system. They are like uh, your tonsils and uh, humans have lymph nodes in their neck region and they concentrate infection into inside there and the white blood cells destroy the Okay, this is the, the abdomen opened up. Right here is the diaphragm. The top organ here that's the largest is the liver. This is the median lobe of the liver. It has two pieces to it with a split down the middle. Then there's the left lateral lobe, which is the largest. And on the right hand side of the rat, or the left hand side of you, is the right lateral lobe. And then far underneath here is the caudate lobe. Got it. 
and this little membrane here is called the lesser omentum. It attaches the liver to the stomach. Okay. And then over on the side of the liver is the spleen. They like to call it a banana shape. And then above the spleen is the stomach, and attached between the stomach and the spleen is another membrane called the greater omentum. And these membranes keep the stomach and the spleen and the liver all attached so it doesn't okay, move now around. This is the stomach, and from the stomach, actually there are three regions of the stomach. You have the cardiac region, which is by the, the heart, and in the middle region is called the fundic, and this region over here by the small intestine is called the pyloric, and you have valves um, here between the entrance of the stomach and the exit of the stomach that keeps the food moving through the stomach. If you can look here, it's the esophagus leading into the stomach. Okay. Okay. Over here is the small intestine, and there's the duodenum, and that's going to lead into the middle section, which is called the duodenum. And then over here, which is kind of like a second stomach, it's called the cecum or sacum. Over here is the ileum. So there's three parts to the small intestine. Each region has its own function, um, but the small intestine is going to help digest and to also absorb nutrients. And the cecum has uh, bacteria in it that is going to also help digest food even further. After the cecum or sacum comes the colon or large intestine. You have the ascending colon, you have the transverse colon that goes across, and then you have the descending colon that goes down. So it goes up, ascending, transverse, and then descending. Normally the intestines are all stuck together and you can't tell which part is which. The membrane. Um, the other thing is we have the pancreas right here. The pancreas is located at the duodenum and it releases digestive enzymes into the small intestine and it also makes glucagon and insulin. And those are two hormones that regulate the sugar levels in your blood. Insulin decreases the sugar levels and glucagon increases the sugar okay, levels. Okay, here's the excretory system. This is the kidney. And when you cut the kidney open, inside you will see the different layers. On the outer layer is the cortex, the renal cortex. In the very middle layer, it's called the medulla. And in the very center here, where it looks very fibrous, is the renal pelvis. And so the kidney is made up of units called nephrons, and the Bowman's capsule, which is where filtration occurs, is on the renal cortex. The lupa henles, which is, makes up the medulla, is in the middle. That is reabsorption. And then the collecting tubules that collect all the waste are here that make up the, the renal pelvis.